I am so excited because guess what I have just received. Ah, yes, <laughs> it is the Wonder Junior Deluxe Plus. And in this video, I'm going to be doing a full unboxing and review of this top of the line manual grain mill that I have had my eyes on for years. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to Grains and Grit. My name is Felicia on this channel. You know what we do. We talk about all the things, real whole grains, some prepper pantry stuff thrown into it from a biblical perspective and more than that. So I am really excited for this video because I have had my eye on the Wonder Junior Deluxe Plus, wow, that's a name, for years and I finally got my hands on one. Now, do you know that this was sent to me by Pleasant Hill Grain, and we will talk more about them later. Okay, so why a hand mill? I already have two electric grain mills. <laughs> why do I need another mill? And that is because this one is a manual mill. So for your prepper pantry, I highly recommend that you have a manual mill for those times when, even when a hurricane comes through, you know, you can still mill your grains without any sort of electricity. Which, speaking of, prepping. If you don't know already, I do have a course out mastering prepping with grains. So be sure to check that out below. If you would like to learn how to master prepping with grains, and we talk about these type of machines in that course. So be sure to go to grainsandgrit.com slash prep with grains, or just click on the link below. So first of all, let's talk about why I chose the Wonder Junior Deluxe Plus. And it's basically this one or the Country Living Grain Mill, which Pleasant Hill Grain does sell both. Those tend to be the Cadillacs of hand mills. They're super high quality, amazing reviews. Um, but like all hand mills, you are able to do um, cracked grains all the way to fine flour, just like I can do with this Nancy Nutramill harvest back there, my electric grain mill as well. But the reason I wanted the Wonder Junior Deluxe Plus is because this one has separate millstones and augers to be able to also grind wet grains. This includes your coffee beans, but what I'm looking at is actually where I can now do masa harina, which is nixtamalized corn. Um, that's what you use for corn tortillas. Also hominy grits, also nixtamalized corn. But bottom line is they're wet grains that I'm using and I cannot throw wet grains into my grain mill. This is also good for nut butters as well. So you can make your own peanut butter, almond butter, you know, those type of things. So I love the fact that I could now do a variety of things. It's not just a replacement for my electric mill. I'll be pulling this bad boy out um, whenever I do my masa harina and all those things. All right, so let's turn this camera around and let's open this up. So here we are, we're gonna open it up, see what's all inside. Now, do you know that I will be linking this machine below? I did um, get it from Pleasant Hill Grain. They actually sent this to me, but they have it where you can purchase it uh, from them as well. So you can either go to grainsandgrit.com slash PHG or click the link below to send you straight to the Wonder Jun Junior Deluxe Plus. All right, so let's open this up. We have a thank you, the Wonder Mill Company. Um, looks like a little QR code. Just in case you did not know, the Wonder Junior Deluxe Plus is the same company as Miss Wonder Wonder Mill. It is made by Wonder Mill. This is just their um, manual mill. Um, I don't know why they went with such a long name, but whatever. Okay. So this is the owner's manual. So we will have to open this up because it's looking like we are going to have to assemble this. Now, do you know with this one that they do have optional accessories for a drill adapter, a motorizing pulley, um, a heavy duty, motor, a bicycle sprocket. So you can even hook it up to a bicycle, which is pretty cool. So these do not come with it. These are all optional accessories. So you do have the option of putting whatever type of motorized device on here to make it motorized with either battery or drill or whatever the case may be. And it looks like they also have an optional protective cover for motorizing. I do not know if Pleasant Hill Grain also offers this, or if you have to go to Wonder Mill website, check in the description box below. I'll find that out for you guys and link it there. Let's see what all we have here. Okay, so first off, we have our 
flower guide. And then this is their double clamp. So it's a double clamp on your counter space up to two inches, according to the description. And then we have our stone set. So it comes with two different stone sets. I believe the stone set, or excuse me, yeah, three different, anyway, grinder sets. So this is a stone set, which I am assuming this is for our dry grains, our regular wheat berries, those type of things. Then we also have our steel burr set, which again, I'm assuming this is for your wet grains, your nut butters, coffee beans, which would make sense because I do know the biggest reason you can't put wet grains and beans in, or wet grains into your mill is because it would gum up everything. So that's probably what that's for. Then it looks like we also have a wonderful brush to help clean. We have our wet grinding um, auger. So this is the new Masa or auger. They probably did this predominantly for Masa Harina, but it also handles your coffee beans, your nut butters, any wet type of grain. And then we just have our regular auger shaft, which would be for your dry grains, various gears. So this is our handle remover and instructions or our lock pin. Oops, it's actually coming undone a bit. So be careful when you open that. And here we have the actual, so here's the handle and then the actual mill. So these are, oh wow, you heard that, all metal. So none of this is plastic except I think um, this part right here, the actual flower guide. All right, glad I didn't just throw the box away because I think with this one bag that was open, um, yeah, this one, a washer had fallen out. So be sure if you see, see any bags open like this to really search your box to make sure you didn't miss anything, which I don't think I did. All right, so here we have everything that came in the box. So now let's put all this together. Wowzers, I will say this is like serious, heavy duty. Like this is also metal. Now these parts I think are plastic. They feel like plastic, just the handle part but that's, it's either a cheaper metal or some sort of plastic with a coating, but that is definitely metal, metal. So this is the clamp base. We're gonna attach this first. We are gonna need a wrench. I actually don't have a wrench in the house. I'm just using pliers. I will say I do like that these have the two latches because that is definitely gonna make it far more sturdy than just one. Okay, so we're gonna want it this way. Honestly, I'm just going by the pictures. Let's put these bad boys back in. Okay, so I'm glad that I looked at the picture because it, when this came, the bolts were facing this way, but when putting it together, it actually needs to go the opposite way. So we actually put it this way and then attach it. So the picture does show that and the instructions say it too, but good thing I looked. And that would make sense because you're gonna want that to lay completely flat. All right, there we go. We got the base in and these are all tight right now it says to attach the handle we have many different pieces here we have a washer we have a pin we have these two gear looking thingies okay so let us see why do i feel like i'm missing something all right i think this has to be taken out i am so caught in picking confused oh oh for heaven's sakes okay okay oh duh okay you gotta go ahead and put the auger in oh heavens Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the, I promise like I'm smarter than this y'all. Okay, so we're gonna choose the regular auger shaft. The handle attaches to the actual auger itself. Okay, so look, more pieces, yay. All right, awesome, y'all get to see me struggle putting things together. I promise you like I'm better at, I'm usually pretty good at this. Okay, so we are gonna do like the picture goes this way. So now we in business. Okay, so now, I think that one goes here. So now we have washer pin flat sign goes hard one of my some weak female can't even get it in okay oh, oh it's going it's going it's, okay oh, i did it okay oh boy okay thankfully it has to just do one not all of it okay that probably will get i'm hoping praying that will get easier as time goes on they actually read this instructions is it just now just attaching this so right way what is this for i mean handle remover instructions I think this goes here. I think this may be an older design. Okay, somehow something's telling me this is an older design. So we're gonna ignore this right now. All right, I'm just I'm just gonna assume this goes in here. I'm just assuming that and okay, that is moving. Okay, now the 
thingies. Okay, so I did the the regular auger shaft. So we're gonna be putting our regular stone mills on here. Promise if I get to the end of this and realize I have done all this wrong, I'm gonna be upset. Okay, I was correct. So these stone sets are for your wheat, corn, rye, oats, th the dry grains. The stainless steel are for your wet grains, nut butters, coffee beans, things like that. We have our stones. I'm going to assume these need to be removed. Hold the flower guide in place. And it's red, not white, like it says. Okay, and this has instructions on it as well. Hold the guide in front of the front mill. So this one with the screws goes in first and matches up with the holes that are here. Okay, and so now I put the washer back on. Those are in. Now I'm assuming this faces, stone parts face together. All right, this one, and for the next right, we have to, I think, pull this out to show us how to do this. Oh, good heavens. Okay, really? We then put this piece on here. We put the washer on. And then this one on, so it's a little 3D here and flat. We're going to put the 3D side towards it. And 3D side, flat side, 3D side, this way. All right, they are even. Once I tighten it up, the, the millstones are actually feeling pretty flush with each other. So here we have it together like this. The stones are there. This is supposed to be, I think, an easier way to adjust the stones for coarse to fine settings. Again, I will be trying this out. So the grains go here in the little hopper. This is a one quart or four cup hopper so that it holds a good amount of grains. And we got it together. Read your instructions, y'all. And hopefully this will also just teach, you know, learn from my mistakes if you get it. Um, <laughs> and now we will set this up either today or tomorrow and we will be trying this out. Yay. Okay, so here we are, new day. I've got the mill set up attached here to my counter. And fun fact, right now our AC has decided to stop working and it's 83 degrees in this house. So we're now going to live authentically, pretend that the power has gone out and we are having to use a hand mill. Yay. <laughs> but either way, so let's continue on with, with this review. What I'm gonna do here is talk about how it feels whenever I'm milling um, some wheat berries. We're gonna mill some dried wheat berries, and then we're gonna be switching out the augers and the, um, the stones for the, um, stain, the steel, was it the steel burr set with the wet um, grains auger because I have some masa harina or some nixtamalized corn that I have made and we're gonna see how that works being ground up grinded up here with it being a wet grain so first of all I can go ahead and say I really like the fact that it has two um, gears or things on the bottom to really hook onto your counter I can already tell this is way more secure I'm like shaking it right now it's not budging so I can already tell that this is way more secure being attached to a counter than when it just has one of those little things that you tighten down I can't remember what you call them but the Wonder Junior has two, this, or yeah, two where the cheaper one that I reviewed earlier, it had a more narrow base and only had one um, flat bolt that you would screw into attached to the counter. And that one did move while milling. This one, I don't think is gonna budge. So this is where we put the grains in and you adjust the stones here. So it has the, I showed you when putting it together that it has the gears that you tighten up to adjust the stones because one thing that has me confused is this right here because the handle does slide and what that's what that's doing is actually adjusting how close the stones are together so I'm gonna relook at my manual to see what it says about that because if you remember when I was putting this together it had this black piece that was showing it should go here and I think that was for an older model that did not have this R pin. And I did confirm with one of my other viewers over on Instagram when I posted about this saying theirs didn't fit either. So I guess they've changed the model, but you're still going to have that random little black piece that's supposed to come here and it just doesn't fit. So let me pull out the manual. Well, I will say the instructions are a little bit difficult. So we're going to throw some grains in here and we're going to see what we can figure out. So let's get started. So this looks to be, it can probably hold about four cups. This is hard white wheat berries that I'm gonna be milling. So let's see how this works. Oh, okay, so immediately I'm having wheat berries just come right out. Okay, what's going on? 
it's not milling it at all. So I have clearly done something wrong here. Now we get to troubleshoot because it's just spitting out wheat berries. It ain't grinding a dang thing. So hold on. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I do see, I think what the problem might be is here. It clearly, it's not a perfectly round shape. It's clearly a fitted shape. So I don't think I had that fitted like puzzle piece matching in. So let's try this now. Ah, mm, that'll do it. Wow. That fits. Okay. So that fits a lot better. Now it makes sense. Okay. And we're going to go for a fine grain here. That now makes sense. And that now feels so much more secure. So you'll know that it's not locked in when the wheel is kind of wobbly and it's wanting to get off of the other stone. Okay. So I think this is going to put these back in. Now let's try and grind some fine wheat berries. I'm going to See how easy it is to adjust this. I have this pretty much as tight as it'll go because I do want a fine grind to make some bread. And we're going to see how long it takes me to grind the wheat that I need to make two loaves of my bread. And if you don't know what my bread recipe is, I will link that down below for you. So let's see. Oh yeah, that's already grinding it well. So let's get started. Okay. It is grinding it, but wow, this is hard work. I mean, it is producing extremely fine flour this is gonna take a while. <laughs> okay, so it may not look like it's coming out really fast. It's not. And you do have to turn this a certain way. So basically you gotta turn it clockwise if you're looking at the mill this way. Turn the wheel clockwise. And y'all, <laughs> this is an arm workout, I will say. So, but I will also say that is very fine. Like. I might be able to not to um, loosen it up a little bit to not have super fine flour like this. I mean, this is, this is really fine flour. So I'm actually going to loosen up just a tad bit. Okay. Let's see. Let's keep going. Oh my word. Okay. So it's been five minutes. And it does collect in here a bit and you can see it where it kind of collects a bit on the stone and I think that's why you don't see it spit out super fast because it as it grinds it is still keeping some in here but it's been five minutes and I've got this much done <laughs> and I would need a lot more to bake bread for my family so this is definitely hard work you can see I'm sweating like crazy because it's also really hot in my house <laughs> Um, I definitely would suggest switching this out with other people to be able to do, but um, it does do fine flour very well. I mean, this is very fine flour. Um, it would be great. It would be perfect flour for making bread. So I know some hand mills may not, you might be concerned about it getting super fine. Well, this one definitely does it fine. So now let's adjust the stones and I want to see how it works for coarser grains. So again, I got about to here, I'd fill up the hopper. So we're up to here now with wheat berries and let's see what it's like with more coarse. They were going for grits type, um, type coarseness. So different bowl. Let's check out is for coarser grains. So we're going to loosen this up. Okay. That is too loose. That's too loose. So it doesn't take much. You don't need to loosen it up much. Now this is wheat. I do suspect. So we're kind of going for like quaint cream of wheat texture. That is still too, man, I'm still getting more like cracked wheat berries. Okay, here we go. Well, I will say it goes much, it's much easier, it's easier when you're going for a coarse or cracked type grain. So again, these are the wheat. So this would be a consistency where it's kind of cracked wheat, but you also have a little bit of fineness in there. So this would be great for like a cream of wheat. Now, not as creamy. This will take you longer to cook because there is cut up bits. But these are wheat berries, so this does tell me that it will do well with corn if I'm wanting some more um, like grits type stuff. So you are just going to have to play with it and just try to get it to the setting that you're, that you're wanting. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for now. So it definitely will do cracked, fine flour, but it is, wow, says, it is a workout. Uh, and it's really only been about 10 minutes of me doing all this. So it is quite a workout, but I will say this has not budged at all. This has not budged at all since I've been milling and I've been, and you really have to 
work at it to mill and it hasn't budged. And I love that. I love that it's the cast iron pretty much as well. Very heavy duty mill. So I do see this one lasting for a long time, so long as you take care of it. So that's really great. So now we need to test this with wet grain. We're gonna try it with masa or harina because that's probably what I'm gonna use this the most for, for making corn tortillas, which, and so masa harina, we'll talk about that. And I'll be doing a whole nother video about how to make your own masa harina from dried corn so you can make your own corn tortillas. But before we do, y'all know that I said that I got this meal from Pleasant Hill Grain and they are this video's sponsors. So now let's hear a word from our wonderful sponsors. Pleasant Hill Grain is the one-stop shop for everything that I mention in my videos on this channel. So I am thrilled to have them as today's sponsor. They're a third generation grain farm in Nebraska, but they don't just sell quality grains. They also offer bread machines, mills, bakeware, preparedness items, you name it. They even carry many of the hard to find grains. And I know that I'll always get quality product and a great shopping experience. They also carry exclusive lines like Como Grain Mills and Rackmaster Ovens. And when I can't find it anywhere else, I know Pleasant Hill Grain will have it. Now they're not exactly a discount dealer, but if you're after quality and consistency, these are your people. Oh yeah, and shipping is always a flat $10 no matter what you order. I love finding exactly what I need on their website. And it's a pleasure supporting a family-based business that truly cares about my needs. So if you're ready to be pleased, shop Pleasant Hill Grain. Just go to grainsandgrit.com slash PHG. Okay, y'all, so here we have our stainless steel and our steel burrs to switch out. So we're gonna see how easy this is. Now I do still have wheat in here, but from what I've noticed, if I just loosen these stones completely, um, they're gonna wanna fall right out, especially while just doing that. So if you find that you don't need to mill all of it, you've added too much in there, no need to undo the whole thing. Yeah, see, as soon as I did that. Okay, and I do suggest with your stones, it does come with a brush, so when you're taking these off, just might as well go ahead and, you know, give them a good cleaning. Okay, so that looks pretty clean. Again, if I'm removing them, might as well do it. So we're gonna get in here and we can give this stone a good clean as well. And then just kind of do this and all the wheat berries. Oh, and I did mention that before this was kind of going in and out like this. When I had the stone set properly, it was the handle was not moving anymore. So make sure you've got everything set properly. <laughs> I think we got it all pretty much. Okay, now to remember how to do this. Okay, so we have screws in the back. Now with this auger, it does come with its own washer and bolts. So try to make sure we're not mixing any of the parts up. This all comes off here. And then, you know, again, while we're at it, now you can wash this or you can just brush it out like that. It was a dry grain, so it's just flour that will come out. Okay, and then I'm gonna really clean this before storage. I like this because this is good um, firm bristles. These are like, um, feels like some sort of plasticky, firm plastic type thing. Okay, and so we do not lose them. Attach these back on. Okay, so now we can set these two stones aside. Oh, and now my least favorite part. We are gonna have to remove this pin so we can completely remove the auger. Okay, so removing the pin was actually not that bad. And we do need to take the handle off. So again, loosen it up. Do not lose any bit of the screws, wings, nuts. We do not want to lose any of that. Okay. Ah, there we go. Keep it all together. I actually will be keeping the original boxes for these so I can put them in the right box and they're already labeled. So we give this and in we go. And the directions for the R pin to remind you which side the washer and the pin goes is here on the mill. So it's a good reminder. Okay, this goes in. I will say that was much easier to get in the second and third time than the very first time I did that. Okay, handle. So remember this one goes on first. So we're gonna take these off. So we're moving the washer and the nuts. And then same thing goes on here, but this time it is this that is going in. Always fun. If you have another person to help you, this will probably go much faster. Oh, remember puzzle piece. 
Do not forget that, otherwise. Okay, and you know that because it'll fit and it, and it won't be able to. And if you hold the handle, and it won't be twisting around. So, okay, we got that. Now these things here, washer, big thingy, big wheel, little wheel. All right, here we go, we did it. Okay, so now let's get our Masa Harina and see how that goes. Okay, so here we go. The main reason why I purchased this mill was so I could use it for wet grains. So what I have here is I have a, a huge amount, and we're not gonna grind all this, of nixtamalized corn that I have made. And yes, a video is coming out soon about corn tortillas. Um, and then we're gonna take this and then let's see how well this does to make me a masa dough that I can then use for corn tortillas. So as you can see, I don't know if you can probably tell on camera, but these these are wet. So we're just gonna do a little bit at a time. I'm just gonna take a handful here. Okay, well, it's not doing it at all, so maybe it needs to be tightened a bit. It's not working at all. I do not know why. Oh, okay, okay, someone's coming out now. Okay, so it seems to just congregate around the, the heads a bit. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I do not need to have this as tight as I would for um, like wheat berries, like the other grinders. So this seems to be going much faster, I think. Okay, I think the point here is to have it where you just, when you're turning, just start feeling a bit of that resistance, like something's actually getting into the stones. It's taking forever for so little, but good news. That is a good masa dope. This is just so slow. So incredibly slow. I have to say, like, I'm just a little disappointed that this isn't happening like I thought it would, but I also know it is a manual mill. So it's just, just how, it's just how slow it usually is. Okay. So I have to admit, I am I'm slightly disappointed, and I think my disappointment is mainly in the fact that I thought this would be easy. So <laughs> a little bit of a delusion on my end um, as far as hand mills go, because this, again, the Masa Harina, this is taking so long. Now they do actually have adapters for to motorize it, and they do have a drill adapter that I will look at seeing if I can get a hold of and seeing how that goes, that will have to be another video. But here's the things that I do like about it. I love that it's sturdy. I like that it looks pretty so I can leave it out um, connected to my counter. But whenever I do need it, it looks great. I mean, this is a very strong design. I have been milling like crazy and it has not budged at all. So I love that. Um, I do like, it is, once you get the hang of it, it is very simple to switch out the auger and the stone mills. You know, you can easily clean this as well. So all these aspects I do, I do like. I do like that it has the capability of doing dry and wet grains. So this is definitely multi-purpose. The main thing is that it's just, it takes forever, but it is also just a manual meals mill so that cheaper meal that i reviewed a while back and i'll link that down below for you guys um i mean it took me 40 minutes just to do nine cups of flour and i'm pretty sure this one would do the same so as of right now i do like it i'm glad that i have a very good and strong grain mill um but i am going to do a little bit more research on the design at see about getting that drill adapter to make it way easier i did see on youtube when they were showing like the masa dough and everything that it is, um, they were using a drill with that. But overall, I do like it. Again, I think I just thought it was gonna be really easy and it's not. But overall, it's a good one and has excellent reviews. It mills dry grains very well. It just, and I would say the time on the dry grains, same amount as any other hand mill, hand mill that I've tried. So there you have it. I hope, hopefully this video was helpful and enlightening for y'all. Be sure to check out Pleasant Hill Grain at grainsandgrit.com slash PHG. They have not only this mill, but they have the Country Living Mill and they have multiple other grain mill, electric grain mills as well, plus every item that you could possibly want, including vent corn to make your masa harina with. 
So hopefully this was helpful. I hope you'll have a wonderful week and I will see y'all next week. Bye.